Come on now, if you're thankful, yeah, 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 for what he's done in your life, for his amazing grace in your life. Come on now. Mm. He's worthy of all the glory and all the honor. All the glory and all the All the glory and all the honor. All the glory and all the honor. All the glory and all the honor. The Bible says, let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I'm glad you're saved and on the way to heaven, somebody in this place shout hallelujah. to be removed and we believe with all our hearts in this place with you all things are possible and if we believe we shall see your glory and tonight we believe Lord we believe that all things are possible not some things but all things all things all things all things all things are possible all things are possible all things are possible all things are possible we believe tonight that all things are possible with you and we give you right now we give you a praise tonight we give you praise right now for what you're about to do we give you lord thanksgiving tonight for the all things are possible for what you're about to do in our lives for what you're about to do in our families for what you're about to do in this church we give you all the glory and all the honor right now i dare you to shout praise the lord and celebrate for your miracle right now Celebrate for your breakthrough right now. Celebrate for your victory right now. Do you believe tonight that with God all things are possible? I dare you right now to shout like you know it is done, it is finished. That I dare you right now before we finish and go any further, 
Some of you walked into this place with some impossible situations in the natural. But with God, all things are possible. Some of you need a crazy miracle. I said, some of you have walked in this place and need a crazy miracle. And how many people realize in this place that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? And one of his specialties is, uh, one of his specialties is where it seems impossible in the natural. When man says, give up, no hope, forget it, nail it in, God loves to show up and show off in those situations. He loves to flex his muscle in those situations, amen? For his name to be glorified and lives to be impacted, amen? Do you believe that? And watch this. Reason is not required during those moments. Faith is demanded. Reason, get the calculator out of the way. But what God wants from us is faith to believe that he can and that he will. And I dare you for the next at least 20 or 30 seconds, if you walked in this place and you need a crazy miracle in your life, I believe tonight with all my heart that God is going to show up in your life to turn that thing around. But I, right now for the next 30 minutes or next 30 seconds, I said, well, even 30 minutes would be just fine. Amen. If God, I want you to give him a shout as if it's already done. I'm talking about a crazy miracle shout as if it's done. Start to thank him for that breakthrough. Start to thank him for that household salvation. Start to thank him for that son that's coming back home, for that daughter that's coming back home. Oh, I dare you right now to shout. It's impossible to please him. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You see in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Some of you are here for the first time looking around going, what in the world's going on? I'm telling you. You just might want to just nudge your partner, the neighbor next to you, and they'll just testify about what God's done in this place, in their lives. God's, God's, looking, God's looking at people's hearts and your faith in him. Amen? So no matter what you're going through tonight, I'm here to tell you it's not bigger than God. Period. I said period. Psalms 50, 15 says, turn to me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver and you honor me. If you believe, you shall see my glory. If you believe, you shall see my If you believe, you shall see my glory. Lift up and say, I believe. All right, praise the Lord. And sometimes with the mistake we make, the mistake we make is, is, is we wait, we wait, we wait. Okay, I'm going to give him, I'm going to give the Lord, I'm going to give him a praise, you know, when the breakthrough happens. I'm, I'm going to give him thanksgiving after the breakthrough or the miracle and, and, and that's what we miss it what we need to do is before the breakthrough before the victory before see that's what see faith says before i see it before it manifests i'm going to give you a shout of praise as if it's done when, even when i don't feel it when i don't see it I know that it's done. I've got a promise from you in the word. I am a child of yours. By his stripes, I'm not going to be healed. I am healed, period. We walk by faith and not by sight. Look at your name, period. Well, God bless everyone of you. Welcome to Fire and Water Saturday Night Service. It's good to have everybody. Uh, uh, why don't we do this? Because I want to get right to our speaker tonight. Uh, 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 you're in for a blessing. Uh, I said you're in for a blessing. You're in for a blessing. Uh, if I can have the ushers quickly to come forward at this time, and we're going to take the offering. Once again, you guys, thank you for your faithfulness.
thank you for your trust watching at home god bless everyone you and helping and make this 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 miracle in the inner city a reality and lives are being impacted god bless you amen um if you need an offering envelope there should be one in the seat pocket in front of you if not you can just raise your hand and one of the ushers will quickly get you an offering envelope amen are you excited to give all right praise god as i said before and i'll keep on saying you you, you do realize that for god so loved the world that he did what so when we give we take on the nature of god how many people want to take on the nature of god amen and um and and, and, and praise the lord so uh, a few um, um are we good Praise God. Sabia, why don't you come and bless the offering, please? Praise God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just bring our tithe and offering back to your storehouse, Father Lord. Lord, we bring our 10% and our offering to you, Lord, that souls may be won, Father God. We ask you, Lord, to continue to increase the ministry, Father God, increase our finances, increase everything that you have for us, Father God. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Bless you. Praise God. You guys go ahead and serve the people at this time. Uh, uh, um, uh, Sabrina, Freddie, why don't you come up here real quick? Come here real quick. You guys, come here. Or no. Or yeah. Or no. Or yeah. No or yeah. Well, 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 well. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What's going on here? I'm seeing rings over here, and what's going on here? What's going on here? What's going on here? Why don't you tell us what's going on so we can celebrate with you? Well, uh, I proposed. Um, God is is so so good. I uh, I feel like I'm totally unworthy. Um, God definitely brought me such a a wonderful, compassionate woman that loves him with the sincerity, with the whole heart. And uh, I know she's totally a woman of God, and uh, she's become my best friend. And uh, I couldn't thank God enough, especially for mentors like Pastor Ben, Pastor Ryan, and uh, spiritual leaders here for her as well, too, to just coaching me, and uh, Pastor Ben's wife as well, too. And just years of letting them, uh, you know, impart just wisdom and knowledge into me and uh i prayed for eight years that i wanted a woman of god and uh she finally came and, uh, truly blessed truly blessed I got butterflies and everything. Um, unworthy is definitely the word on my part also. I'm so unworthy. This man is amazing. His heart is uh, truly, truly from God. His compassion, his love for uh, the brokenhearted, the hurting people is uh, definitely is what attracted me to him. He's amazing, and uh, I'm so humbled just to be next to him and his presence. And, um, it's good. Said. For Pastor Gus and Ben, Mama Betsy, and just teaching us how to Christian date, we don't know anything. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, they definitely encouraged us and uh, prayed with us. And so praise God. So. Oh, come on now. Celebrate with them one more time. Congratulations. Um, and many of you know their testimonies and um, of course um, with um, Sabrina of course um, Seaborn uh, his family and and how um, again um, household salvations and when God gets a hold of somebody and we stand in the gap and how Sabrina came from Colorado gave her heart to Jesus and she was searching and um, again you know and, and you know the restoration within the family and it's really it's, 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 it's pretty amazing you know but it's, it's scriptural though you know, it's Bible, and, um, and that's what happens when you really pick up the scripture and really hold on to the word of God. And, of course, Freddie, his start, and, 
you know, some of the things that he's been through and some of the addictions and how God has touched his heart. And it's truly not the way we start. It's the way we finish. Amen. It's, it's the truth. To God be the glory. Amen. Well, well, tonight, um, what we're going to do is um, real quick, um, uh, just a, a couple quick announcements. Uh, at we, um, next weekend, Saturday night, we have the illustrated sermon, new illustrated sermon, Saturday night. So let's make sure we get the word out. Um, as far as um, getting people here, we do the possible. God will do the impossible. Amen. So I believe um, um, that's going to be the start of one. We've got three all together. We're going to do that one on Saturday. Then we're going to come back the following Tuesday and the following um, uh, Saturday. So this coming up Saturday, so one week from today, um, illustrated sermon. Let's get the unsaved here. But it's not just for the unsaved. Um, as a Christian, it'll impact your life. It's, it's hard. It's, it's straightforward. Amen. And um, so uh, 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 let's make sure we get people here. And I believe um, we're going to see a lot of people um, impacted, a lot of people um, 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 that have become complacent as Christians. That, that, that won't be a problem after that. Th that part, I, I believe that with all my heart. Amen. And, uh, and then if you're not saved, they're going to walk out with, 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 with Jesus. I believe that with all my heart. Amen. So make sure you grab some flyers and give them out. And we do have outreach next week also in the morning. So we're going to go into the neighborhood and get the word out for the night service. So um, let's get all hands on deck. Amen. Look at someone and say, no, no spectators. Amen. All hands on deck. All right. Praise the Lord. Together. That's how we make this thing happen. So um, 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 we start at 930 with fellowship, coffee, donuts, and fellowship here. And we'll go out and we'll get the word out and pass out flyers and invite people to come to church that night. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, so that's next weekend. Uh, I also want to encourage you tonight, um, our speaker, in, the, in our bookstore there, there's a lot of, like, uh, um, encouraging material. You know, I don't do this very often, so when I do it, you know that, you know, praise God. So make sure you clean them out, amen, whatever's back there. And no, I'm sorry, I mean, I, I know what he carries, and, uh, and um, so let's bless his ministry. And, you know, um, whatever's back there, I promise, will, 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 will bless you and help your faith and increase your faith and help your Christian walk. That's for sure, Okay known him for a long time, and, um, and again, um, tomorrow he's going to be back here teaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, so I'm just trying, it's going to be awesome. I, I said this before, and, I, and I'm being honest, Pastor Saeed, you're probably one of the best that I've ever heard on the topic. You know, there's a lot of great people teaching, you know, and, and teach on the topic of, of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but I, I, the way you deliver it, and the way God's put on your heart, and the way you teach it, I mean, you know, a young kid can receive it, and understand it, and it's, and it's powerful, it's simple, and, uh, and it's powerful, so um, so some of you that maybe have not really on that topic have had a clear understanding. Um, um, again, tomorrow he'll be, and he might be touching a little bit on it tonight, okay? So, again, I want to encourage you to make sure you visit the bookstore and, um, and, 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 and visit all that material and let the Lord lead you as far as that goes. Praise God. Well, tonight, very dear friend of mine, amen, uh, from Phoenix First Assembly, um, um, prayer um, pastor there for many years. How many years now have you been prayer pastor there? Twelve years under Pastor Tommy Barnett, one of the greats, Amen you know, of our time, and um, so he's been under a great covering for many years, but now God is really releasing him to just go and just um, minister, you know, basically around the world now, and, um, and, and, and God's already, already doing it. I mean, I mean, just the other day, he was, um, he was ministering to the whole world through TV, praise God. I don't know if you guys got a chance to see that um, on, on TBN. Actually, he was sharing his testimony and, um, and on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, so it's already taking place, and I know a lot of lives were touched and are going to be touched in the future. Amen. So please help me welcome tonight Pastor Saeed Hussein. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Pleasure it is for me to be your pastor. Truly, he's one of my best friends, one of the people in the ministry that he is is what you see is what you get. And I just love that about him. You know, and we've known each other many, many years. And as I was sitting there, the Lord reminded me the first church I ever preached at, seven, eight years ago, was Osborne. That was the first time I ever preached outside of my church. And I'm back here tonight, the first church that I'm speaking now after being launched is back here. So, 
So God is, God knows what he's doing. Timing, timing is perfect. And there's three ingredients in having a miracle. You got to be the right person. You got to be there at the right time. Okay? And you must be the right person. Okay? Right time, right place, and the right person. Right now, I want you to say this. This is the right time. This is the right place. And I am the person. Tonight is your night for me. I want to thank you, C, and Papa Frank, where are you at? He's in the office. Things. Gus being my brother, that makes you my dad. So thank you. Thank you. And also, last time uh, that I was here in this location, when I was preaching by God's divine plan, Stacy was here. Also, again, tonight. I don't know how that happened, but I'm so glad that you're here. <clears throat> so thank you for having us here tonight. Before we start, uh, my beautiful wife, is this not picking? Okay, it's not picking out. Okay, well, turn it on. Okay, there we go. Yeah. All right. I don't like to hold things in my hand. I like to. I'm kind of Italian type, but I'm an Italian who's never been to Italy. I have been, yeah, visiting. Okay, sorry. Before we start, I want to introduce to you my beautiful wife, Cynthia. Would you stand up? She's my, she's my best friend. She's my best friend. She's uh, my love of my life. She's my partner in ministry and life. She's my own American Express. I don't leave home without her. When we, were f when we first got married, I was a Muslim. And she was a Mormon. So that there, right there tells you there's a God. It wasn't after a few years that I was walking in the grocery store. I was new here. You know, and, and after we got married, I, I thought, I didn't know any better. I, wa I was walking in the grocery store, and I looked in the aisle, and I thought, oh, my goodness, they named it candy after us, M&M's. <laughs> See, you're never going to eat M&M's again without remembering that. You're not going to forget that. Also, before we start, I want to answer a question that I know it's in the back of your mind. I know you're thinking it. I know how people think. You're thinking to yourself, his name is Saeed Hosseini. It kind of sounds Arabic, but he kind of looks Mexican. <laughs> What's up with that? Well, I got that question all my life. I came over here, I was born in Iran. I came over here in 1973 to go to school. But back then, nobody knew where Iran was. So people would uh, ask you, where are you from? I said, I'm from Iran. They go, well, are you Arab? I go, don't call me Arab. I'm Persian. That Persian pride would come out. Don't call me Arab. Well, something happened in 1979. We had the hostage crisis. Well, by, back then I was going to college and I was uh, crossing the campus. I got the daylights beat out of me because I was from Iran. So after that, when they thought I was Arab, I didn't make an issue out of it. <laughs> I let it go. I was safe as an Arab until September 11, 2001. Oh my goodness, one of those names that pop on TV was almost exactly like mine. So at that time, we lived in Arizona. So when they thought I was Mexican, I said, Si, Senor, Gloria a Dios. <laughs> I was safe as a Mexican until recently. <laughs> we had all these SB 1073 going on, you know, border problems. So now I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what else I can be. When I'm here, I'm Greek. Opa. Opa. Yes. Kalimera. Kalinichta. Kalinichta. I'm learning. So, you know, if, if, you know, depending on where I go, I become different. You know, I was in, uh, we were in North Dakota earlier, January, and I told that story. I said, if you can help me be, uh, you know, some, somebody else who I can be next, let me know. 
But there's a lot of American Indians over there. So the lady came to me at the, uh, at the uh, break and said, we figured out you could be an Indian. I said, how? <laughs> she said, no, no, I don't think they say that anymore. I said, no, I'm asking you how. <laughs> well, that was a little, just a humor before we start. Let us pray before we begin. Father, my Father, I thank you. I thank you for your presence here tonight. I thank you for what you have done in this place, God. Through your servant here, through the servants here. And God, we thank you for what's in store for them, for the future. Because their eyes have not seen, their ears have not heard. Neither has it in entered into their hearts those things that you have prepared for those who love you and are called according to your plans. And Lord, this house has been called by you. This pastor has been called by you. And I thank you for the favor of God that's upon him, upon this, this place. So tonight we we'll say, Holy Spirit, come and have your way as we tonight want to glorify you and everything that's said and done tonight. So come. Lord, we want to make this place a comf comfortable place for you to come and do whatever you want to do. So you are welcome. Come and do that which only you can do. And we are careful to give you all the praise and glory and honor in advance for what's going to take place here tonight, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, as Pastor Gus mentioned a few minutes ago, a few days ago they aired that program on TVN, and I was just very, very blessed and very honored to be on there. But more important than that, I was blessed by the person who came on before me, which was your pastor, because I know his heart. And I loved one thing that he said. He said, I am the example of the foolish things that God can use. And I said, well, that program is a special program because they got fool number one and fool number two following him. <laughs> God says, I use the foolish things to confound the wise. That's the only explanation that you can give about what's going on here. God gets the glory. Okay? He says, I'll use the least. I'm just looking for people who are willing, who are humble, who say, here I am. That's how God, why God is using myself and my wife, an ex-Mormon, an ex-Muslim. We were just naive enough, simple enough, foolish enough to believe that if God says, I want to use you, we said, okay. All he was looking for was someone to say, to say I'm willing, God, make me able. That's the only explanation. When I open my mouth and doors open up somehow for me to be on TBN to do all this, that is nothing but the favor of God that has been released Therefore, I cannot get up and say, I am a third generation Pentecostal. You know, I saw it growing up. I learned it. I saw, no, no, no. <laughs> I didn't know anything. I just know I'm like the blind man in the Bible that they try to corner him and say, listen, you know, you were blind before. Who in your family sinned? Because there had to be somebody that sinned. Was it your mom? Was it your dad? Was it your cousin? They kept going down. Finally, he said, listen, I don't know about any of that stuff. Okay? And I don't care. This is one thing I know. I was blind. Now I can see. Go argue with somebody else. So I stand before you like that blind man saying, I don't know why God wants to use me. I don't know why God is doing this. I don't know. All I know is that I know what I used to be. I know where I was going. And I know where I'm going now. And who I am today. That right there is called a testimony. The Bible says we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. He did his part. He said, now I've done my part. Now I want you to go to your part. Do your part. Testify. Testify to people what I've done in your life. Because when we testify, it not only benefits others who hear, but let me tell you, every time I testify, it helps me because I, I remember, God, you really did that. Wow. I am not surprised anymore. I'm never surprised, but I'm constantly amazed. 
I'm not surprised, but every single day I'm amazed at what God is doing. I live in a state of amazement every day. And let me tell you, if your testimony, if somebody asks you to give a testimony, if you have to think too long and you have to go back any farther back than yesterday, there's something wrong, okay? Some people living in 20 years ago. Well, God did this for me 20 years ago. We talked to him about baptism of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah, Sonny, I was, I, was I was filled with the Spirit 20 years ago. I go, really? It must have leaked out. <laughs> because I don't see any fruit. I don't see any evidence. Okay? Now, we get hung up on tongues as though it's the only thing. What good is it if I walked around and talked in tongues and I lived for the devil? What good is it if I didn't have a changed life? People get hung up on tongues. Tongue is an evidence. The bigger evidence is a changed life. A bigger evidence is what God is doing with you after you got filled with the Spirit. Because if there was not a change, what good did it do? It's like the people that brag about being slain in the Spirit. Let me tell you, if you go down and you don't come back up different, all you did was you take a nap. Because being slain in the spirit is supposed to, you're supposed to change you. You're supposed to experience something from God, but God is supposed to reveal something. Something need, there needs to be a so that behind everything we do. Jesus said, I did this so that I sent my son in the world. I gave it so that the whole world could be saved. Everything needs to have a so that. When you speak, want to speak in tongues, you need to have a so that. Because if you don't have a so that, all you have is a so what? So what you speak in tongues? So what you pray and fast? There's no change. I don't see anything happening here. Do you have a so that? You came here tonight so that what? So that change could have. So you could hear a testimony. You give a testimony so that others can be encouraged. Can say, God, if you can use this guy, you can use me. Here I am. I'm willing. So I'll go back to my testimony now. We start tonight. I'm going to give you my testimony. And when you have a testimony, person with a testimony, that means they have gone through a lot of tests. Okay? The first four letters is a test. There's a lot of things that God tests us through our testimony. And each time you take a test, when, when the teachers gave you a test at the end of the semester, it wasn't because they were mean. Why was it? Because you're getting ready to be promoted to the next level. So every time God gives us a test, he's getting to promote us. And our, our testimony keeps increasing, increasing, increasing. Your testimony should never be, this lady right here, which I love, she's taking a nap right now. Hello. I love her. I see her every time, every year. She's, been, she's like a pillar. She's got testimony. I'm sure she's got testimony, just volumes of it. Just the fact that she's here is a testimony. So she smiles. Okay? We all need to have fresh testimonies. God wants to give you all a testimony. That's why we testify so others can hear it and get their own testimony. So my testimony is very long, but I'll try to shorten it. I try to bring some humor into it, try to interject something so you don't get bored with it. Because a lot of it, a lot of the testimony as I was growing up is not really something you want to talk about because it's really not, not all that pretty okay I know what I was who I was I know who I am today a lot of what your pastor said it doesn't matter how you start it's good how you finish your start just gives you a point of reference that you can refer to and say that's where I came from and once in a while we need to remind ourselves where we came from so we don't forget okay we don't forget where we came from. That keeps us humble. Okay? That keeps us on our knees knowing, God, I know who I used to be and what you've done. And I cannot take credit for it. So, God, if you can use me, keep using me, but make sure you keep me on my knees and humble. So I don't get too big of a head and think that I'm all that. And anyone that you see that has a huge testimony, Christian, has gone through a lot of tests. And they have a lot of scars. But Christian scars are not visible scars. Visible scars you can see. Christian scars are on the inside. 
because we as Christians, we think we're supposed to walk around and somebody says, how are you doing, brother? We put our Christian smile on, praise the Lord, hallelujah. But down inside, we're dying. Down deep inside, we want somebody to say, ask me some more. Care enough to really ask me some more because I really want to tell you how I'm doing. The problem is we don't trust too many people because we've been scarred before. We've been scarred by people, by trusting people and talking to them about the private things, about our struggles, about whatever it is. And they have taken advantage of it and told us. So therefore, we walk around with a lot of scars. It's, in, it's time we stop that. It's time we stop that. And it's time for us to be transparent. Okay? Transparent. This is where we came from. This is what happened. So I came from a Muslim background. I was born into a Muslim family. Up until the age of 13, when I moved over here, there was a lot of stuff that I saw growing up as a Muslim that, frankly, didn't make any sense. And I always had more questions than answers. All these questions going through my mind. How could this be? How could this, this God want expect this from me? How could this, how could this didn't make any sense? There was one thing in front, one thing in the back. It didn't add up, okay? What I saw in front of people and what I saw in the back, it did not add up. Therefore, I was very turned off by religion. I said, if that's religion, I don't have anything to do with it. When I came over here at the age of 13, from the age of 13 to the age of 23 or 4, when I got saved, I walked around with, I wanted to have nothing to do with religion. I told my wife when we got married, I said, listen, do not bring religion into our house. I don't want to have anything to do with religion because I had such a bad taste in my mouth about religion. To me, religion was enslaving, okay? I didn't know anything about grace. I didn't know anything about relationship. I didn't know there was a God that actually talks to you, that hears you. See, as a Muslim, you know God as the unknowable God. The Jews know him as the unknown God. Okay? But Muslims know him as the unknowable God. That means you never get to know him. He's just, you just don't. Therefore, you're always walking around thinking, questioning, did I do enough good? Did my good outweigh the bad? And even if you did all the good that you did, you were not sure if you died, you, could, you, you would go to heaven. That question was never answered. And also, you never knew your prayers were heard. So it was ritualistic. It was all rituals. You prayed, you fasted, you did chain beating, all that stuff. But it was all to please someone that you weren't even sure if you heard it or if you saw it or if you even cared. Okay? That's a tough place to be in. Therefore, I wanted nothing to do with religion. Now, we got married the first few years of our lives. <laughs> we stuck to that agreement. No religion. When I graduated from college, I graduated in computer science back in 1979. There weren't many jobs for computer science back then. Back then in 1979, if those of you who were around know about it, they, but they had the punch cards. The computers were the size of the stage. And to do a program, you had to do it in punch cards and feed it through. And it, I, that's what I grew up. That's what I did. So when I got out of college, I wasn't, the, I wasn't the brightest student because I never studied. I was a partier. I just barely passed. Therefore, there was no jobs. Got after job, uh, rejection after rejection. So finally, I started delivering pizzas for Domino's Pizza. Got involved with that. Became a driver. Became a manager. Became a manager trainee. Became a man manager. Then a few years after that, we moved to Chicago to franchise with Domino's Pizza. As someone that coming from the Middle East, two things are very important. You, you were ingrained in it. Education and status, okay? You had to be doctor so-and-so or engineer so-and-so or lawyer so-and-so, accountant so-and-so. And the kind of car you drove, the kind of watch you wore, the kind of wife, all of that was a status thing. So, man, I was driven by that, okay? So when we moved to Chicago, I 
was chasing after the world, after the money. My goodness, our first, our first store opened up with a big bang. <laughs> it was so amazing. Success came so fast. It came so fast. Back in 1984, I was the first franchisee in Chicago when it opened up. And we, we, got, we got successful real fast. Now, one after another, we start opening other stores. Success was so fast that now I have find myself in this dilemma. The things that I had planned for my life for the 20 years had come to pass within two or three years. So I'm like, okay, what now? Okay, one more store is going to make me happy. One more car, one more this, one more that. And I would get it, and it was so short-lived. It was just gone. So one day I'm driving down the road, and I got the, the car of my dreams. I'm brand new Maserati. I'm sitting at the light, smoking a joint. Hey, don't look so lily white. You know what I'm talking about. I'm sitting there smoking a joint, and all of a sudden, I felt a presence in the car. I just started trembling. I started crying. I started crying in the car. As though this, this presence, this force, was talking to me was asking me a question, what is wrong with you? So I, had to take, I took an inventory of my life. What is wrong with me? Okay, I got the car of my life, my dream. I got the wife of my dream. I am pocket full of money. What is wrong with me? I, could, I didn't have an answer. I did not have an answer to that. Well, I drove home that day. Now, I remember I told my wife, do not bring religion to this house. So I walk in. What was she doing? She was on the floor reading the Bible to our four-year-old son. Well, being the, you know, self-control guy I am, and peaceful and kind, I blew up. <laughs> so we had a major argument, and I left with the intention of never coming back. I checked in the hotel down the street. So I'm not coming back. It was in that hotel room that God got a hold of me. I took a major inventory of my life. God got a hold of me. I went back Five in the morning, the next day or whatever, a few days after, we talked. And I said, okay, something's missing. Now, she has been going to this church for a while. But she would ask me if I wanted to go. And I said, no, that's okay. But every time she'd ask me, I'd say, no. I, I would say, I hope you don't quit asking me because someday I'm going to want to go. So don't stop. I didn't tell her that. Well, this time we said, okay, we have tried everything else. Let's try God. Let's go to that church. We did. We went to that church. It was an Assembly God church. I'm telling you, I walked in there. They were playing the drums. They had music. I go, this is church? I love this. There was, there was peace. There was joy. There was, the people hugged me, said, I love you. Welcome. I'm like, man, I want what these people have. Where do I get it? So I kept going back. I kept going back. I kept going back. For about nine months, they would give the altar call every time. And every time I wanted to get up and answer the call, it was as though there was a chain on my legs to the pew, and there was a thousand-pound weight pushing me down. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I couldn't even say the name of Jesus. When they would sing the songs, I would replace it with God, and I was okay. Well, now the struggle had become so big in my head. Now I have all the success in the world, but I'm walking around like a dead man. What is wrong? Something's missing. Something's missing. I'm, I'm getting the word, and every week there was a struggle between my head and my heart. My head was saying one thing. No, 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 no. This doesn't make sense. No, no, no. It was screaming. No, no. But there was another voice coming from my heart, and it was saying, go, go, go. There's something there. The struggle had become so much. I said, okay, God, today, I had a really bad, hard week that week. I said, today, this Sunday, I have to know you're real. I got to know you're real. If you're not real, either I'm not going to come back or I'm, I'm going to come back. I have to know today you're real. Well, that day, they gave a message in tongues. Of all things, my goodness, tongues freaked me out. <laughs> tongues just freaked me out up to this point because they were so nice. They were such nice people. I overlooked the tongue part. <laughs> Every time they spoke in tongues, I would cringe and because two groups of people, and I will talk about this in detail tomorrow, 
There were two groups of people that turned me off with tongues. The tongue talkers, two groups of them. Those that were legalistic and those that were weird. I said, I don't want to become like them. I don't, if, the being, if being tongue talker is being weird or legalistic, I don't want it. That day, God had to bypass the legalism and the weirdism to get to me directly. They gave a message in tongues. And this is what I heard in my native language. Said, you had asked if I was real. I'm real. Come forward and I'll show you. <clears throat> well, that day, after that day, <clears throat> after that, God became real to me in one instant. Because I was like that blind man. I don't know how this happened. I don't care. I got to go. I go up to the altar. I go, what do you need, brother? I said, well, I, I want to meet this Jesus. I want to get saved. What do I got to do? I go, okay, just repeat this prayer after me. I repeated the prayer. I go, well, praise the Lord. I go, praise the Lord. What? You're saved. I go, that's it? Well, what do I need to do? Nothing. What do you mean nothing? What's my part? Where do I pay? Where do I sign? What do I do? See, grace was unknown to me. I didn't know what grace meant. Up to this point, all I knew was you do who you hope to get. Grace was unknown to me. I didn't know what it meant. So I said, okay, I guess it didn't work. I tried it. I went home. I knew something happened. The first time I went to drink an alcoholic drink, I would pick it up. I started thinking about what I was doing was wrong. I still drink it because I liked it. But then when I would, the effects of it, I would be miserable. I would miss what used to make me happy, what used to make me high. Now I was miserable. Couldn't wait to get down from it. Slowly but surely, things start happening in my life. The big thing that really made the change was now I got I got discipled by a deacon one on one Will Hildebrand I still remember his name to this day he took me one on one like if I was a baby when he talked about born again I was literally born again I was a baby I knew nothing the base the most basic things okay he started teaching me one on one I started learning I started learning now my biggest problem had become when I would open the Bible to read it. Man, I couldn't understand it. It was, I spoke English well, I read English well. All that, I was fine. But when it came to Bible, it was, I couldn't understand it. Why? Because the Bible, now I'm, I know, the Bible to the unsaved, all it is is a book of history. All it is is history. Even when you get saved without the power of the Holy Spirit, it becomes a book of mystery. That's, I was reading mysteries. I couldn't understand what it was. That was my biggest thing. I wanted to learn, but I couldn't. So now something happened. Pastor says, we're going to give a teaching on baptism of the Holy Spirit for six weeks. And after that, you can come receive it. After the first week, I'm like, why do I need to wait for six weeks? Give it to me now. Come on, why do I have to wait? I waited. After the six weeks was over, I was the first one. I ran to the altar. I wanted it so bad. I've been waiting for this for six weeks. I go up to the altar. Brother, what do you want? I said, I want to receive baptism of the Holy Spirit. What do I need to do? Okay, we're going to pray for you, and you're going to feel like babbling. Okay, I can babble. They lay hands on me, and I start babbling. They go, oh, hallelujah, you got it. I got what? You got it. You got the Holy Spirit. I go, that's it? Six weeks I've been sitting there listening to you. Six weeks you've been talking about power. I feel no power. Where's the power? I wanted to fire come down. I wanted, I wanted power. You've been talking to me for about fire, about power, about this or that. That's all I get. All right, I guess. I thought, I said, okay, I guess I tried. It didn't work. All right. I went home. My goodness, first time I opened the Bible, I knew something that happened. I said, did somebody translate this book? 
It was as though somebody had taken it from Chinese and translated it into English. I could understand it. See, to the unsaved is a his book of history. To the saved without the power of the Holy Spirit is a book of mystery. But to the one who has the power of the Holy Spirit, that book becomes a book of destiny. Now, that book, that book started talking to me. That book started talking to me as I was reading it. I'm going to make a long story short. Things start happening. Business start taking the second place to a process a few years. God spoke in 96 to sell all your stores. And by that, at that time, we had 15 stores in three different locations. Just like that, it was sold. Okay, God, we're ready to move. We're ready to move. What happened? Two years of silence. Two years, God did not speak. I said, God, what happened? What do you do when you don't know what to do? You pray. So we start praying at home. We start having prayer meetings at home. We put a CD in the CD player and start praying. People would come. God was training us for what he had in store for us for the future. He started training us. He started showing us. We sold everything. Well, after that, he spoke, uh, made it clear, moved to Arizona. We knew nobody in Arizona. He confirmed through many different things. We come to Arizona. We walked in the balcony of the Phoenix First Assembly. Somebody said, go there. Make sure you check out, check out the church. We walked in, and the Spirit of God hit us. Started crying the whole time. I mean, it was amazing. We say, oh, God, please let this be the place. Make a long story short, things happen. We moved. We moved to Phoenix. We went there. I came here to retire. I had no plan to be a minister. If you told me in Chicago you're going to be a minister, I would have ran. I came here to retire. We got involved in the church. We started, you know, things started happening, and, and then I bought a business on the side, and now all I can think about is ministry. I'm sitting in the business. All I can think about is ministry. Well, again, I'm trying to make a long story short because we want to pray for you here. Opportunity came up for me to start on the staff. Got a call from Pastor Barnett's office. My first official day on staff was September 11, 2001. Talk about God's timing. I said, well, I walked in there. I was so scared. I'm telling you, I said, God, surely you made a mistake. Surely you made a mistake. This is the wrong time. I'm the wrong person, and this is the wrong place. Definitely. This whole thing is wrong, God. How could this be? I talked to Pastor Barnett in the hallway, and I said, you know, listen, you haven't told the church yet. I'll back down, hire somebody else. I don't want to bring shame to the church. I don't, this is a bad time. Pastor Barnett said, don't talk like a crazy person. This is from God. We don't understand it. But I know God doesn't make mistakes. <laughs> that gave me the courage to go. And we have seen, we have seen God now do amazing things over the last 12 years the prayer pavilion opened up over 1700 people been healed of cancer through the prayer ministry over 110,000 people on our prayer network around the world too much to mention too much to mention but it all happened when i received baptism in the holy spirit things start happening because now the mysteries started turning into destiny god started talking to me through his book hebrews 4:12 says the word of god is alive and is powerful and is sharper than any two-edged sword. Two-edged sword. That word two-edged in the Greek is the word distomas, which means two mouths. One of the attributes having two mouths. What are the two mouths he's talking about? The word of God is powerful, it's alive, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. First mouth is the mouth of God. When he spoke it, I have my Bible. When he spoke it through his word, his mouth already spoke the word. The first mouth speaks it. Then, through the spirit, we hear it. And he goes deep down into our spirit. And the Bible says, out of innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Then it flows out, and the second mouth speaks it. That's when it produces power. Okay? Those are the two mouths. The word of God, without the power of the Holy Spirit, is ink on paper. It's mystery. It's history. But it becomes powerful. 
when the second mouth hears the first ear hears from the mouth of God that spoke into it and understands it and knows it's God and lets it sink down into his spirit out of his innermost being will flow to his little Now power is produced. And then it says you can come to God in a time of mercy and receive what you need. Receive grace. Receive favor. That verse continues on. But the first mouth has to speak it first. He has spoken it. But is your ear hearing it? He's already spoken. The first mouth did his job. Is your ear tuned into the Holy Spirit to hear? Or not? Because if he's speaking and you're not hearing, or if you're not listening, there's one thing to listen, another thing is to hear. Okay? You may be listening, but are you hearing? You can only hear to the power of the Holy Spirit because all these voices talk to you. Which one do you silence so the Holy Spirit can talk to you? That's the importance of the Holy Spirit in, in your lives. And I'm going to talk about that in detail tomorrow. Okay? I'm just giving you a little taste tonight. I'm giving you a little taste tonight. First mouth has already spoken. Are you going to allow the first mouth to speak into your ear? So your mouth can start speaking it now with power. See, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4, 420, the kingdom of God is not of what? Words. But is of power. Ah, words. Words, all words do, if we are reading the Bible legalistically and trying to beat the word into the people, all words do is argue. All words do is debate. Hey, it just debates. And I saw this with my own eyes when we went to, to, to Israel. There was a group of people on the left side of the Wailing Wall, the, the real Jews, the real heavy-duty ones. They had the Bibles the size of this, twice the size of this opened up. And they were, and this guy on this side, I'm like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? They're fighting. What did they argue? He said, no, 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 no. They're debating. They're debating, they're learning, they're challenging each other. They were debating the word of God. And I saw with my own eyes what words do. They debate. Jesus didn't debate anyone. Okay, he didn't walk around and say, listen, let me tell you, your theology is wrong, brother. Let me correct your theology. After all, I'm son of God, I know theology. No, 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 he did not argue with anyone. Okay, what did he do? He just walked and said, be healed. He blew on him. He said, be filled with the spirit. He talked, Lazarus, come forward. Boom, there he was. He demonstrated. He demonstrated. Okay, I got to turn my, I got to turn the other mic on, brother, because I need both hands. I got to turn this one on. It's not working? Why is it not working? Okay, I don't have to shout then. Okay, we, we will compromise. We shall compromise. We're among friends here. Oops. There we go. I need both hands. Somebody need to give me another hand here. Oh, there you go. Mike stand will help. Why didn't I think about that? Hello. Thank you. Give her a good hand, would you? She saved the day. The word of God is sharper than two-edged sword. Listen, when this word gets into you, when it goes from history to mystery to destiny, you can't put it down. You put it down, it picks you back up. Why? Because it's your destiny. There was a guy in the Bible named Jeremiah. Okay, young guy. God told him to go do certain things. And every place he went, there was trouble. They started persecuting he said, one day in Jeremiah 20, he's talking to him. He said, listen, listen, God, thank you. There we go. Thank you. What's the problem with being tall? God says no problem with that. Oh, sorry. I had to say that. Anyway, let me get back in the spirit. I got in the flesh real quick. Jeremiah said, God, everywhere I go, I'm trying to preach your word. But every time I open my mouth, trouble comes. He got to a point where he got so frustrated, he said, listen, God, from now on I've decided I'm going to put this thing down. I'm not going to bring you up anymore. 
And he said, I tried to put it down, but he said, something happened to me. Something happened to me. The word of God shot out of my bones like fire. When the word of God gets in you, you can put it down, but it picks you back up. You put it down, and it picks you back up. The only way you put this fire out is by choice. That fire keeps burning. You have a choice. Luke 12, 49 says, I have come to send fire. And how I wish it was already kindled. He said, I wish you would do something in between. I brought the fire. Don't wait for me to come and start your fire from scratch every time. Kindle it in between. Pray fast. So when I come, all I have to do is go. All he has to do is come. If he's looking for some substance from you. He's looking for kindling from you. Will you give him your substance? You ask, what is my substance? What do you have in your hand? What do you have in your hand? Okay? Everybody's got something in their hand. God will never ask you to give him something you don't have. Sometimes God asks us, he say, I want you to do this. And we say, but God, that's all I have. You know what he says? That's all I want. Okay, he's asking you for something. That's all he wants. And what is in your hand and what's in your hand and what's in my hand are different things. What's in our hand that we're not willing to give up is what we so hold so dear to us. God asked me for anything except this. And he says, no, I want that. Because you're holding too tight. Open it up. What is it? What is it that God's asking? Perhaps it's for you to turn the mind off. Perhaps God's saying, I want to show you greater things. Perhaps God is saying, I have a greater plan for you. Jeremiah 29, I have a plan for your life to give you hope and future. That word future, the word acharit means I have an expected end for your life. There's an expected end for your life. I didn't even get to my fog machine here because I got so excited. I got to tell you about this. I got to tell you about this. One day... God, when you hear the Holy Spirit, he starts talking to you in every aspect of life. He talks to me in the most unusual places. I was in the steam room, and it was so thick. It was so thick. I said, God, this is like a fog. He said, yeah, you're in my fog. Sit down. I want to talk to you. That was 2009. He said, sit down. I want to talk to you. You're in my fog. And he said, I want to, I want, I want to show you the face of God. I want you to taste the flavor of God. I want you to experience the fear of God. I want you to experience the faithfulness of God. He said, I want to hide you. I want to guide you, direct you, lead you, take you places in my fog. Then he said, fog, favor of God. <clears throat> Luke 2.52, Jesus grew in wisdom and favor and stature with God and man. Listen, if Jesus needs favor to grow, if he needed to grow in stature and wisdom, how much more do we need it? God says, I will give it to you. Connect with my spirit and I will talk to you. I will show you. My word will come alive in you and it will burn in you like a fire. But come. Come. What is it that God is talking to you? He wants to give you favor. Listen, since 2009, we have not come out of the favor. And that's what these blue bands. I see some of you have it. Some of you have it on. These blue bands. Stacy came, she said, well, I still have my band. I gave it to her in the hospital when she wasn't doing too good. She was kind of horizontal like this. Look at her now. She said, I haven't taken off. She said, I haven't taken off my wrist. And she said, boy, I've got so much favor. Is there power in this band? No, no. It's just you are conscious of the God who wants to give you favor and you're looking for it, you ask, believe, confess, declare, and expect. And you go all the way to Z. I have it. I, I've received so much favor since 2009 that I can write a book about it. Oh, by the way, no, I did write a book about it. We have it back. 
But I can write a book about all the favors that I've received since 2009, like a free trip to South Africa, like a free trip to Israel, like a trip going to uh, Israel, invited by the government of Israel. And I gotta, I gotta finish with this. I have to finish with this before we have the altar call. I know we're running a few minutes late. But listen to me. We started with the foolish things. I want to show you an example of the foolish things that God did. The fog message, when I spoke it, was 10, 10, 10. Don't play it yet. One second. Let me set it up. Oh, that's good. That's good. Hold it right there. 10, 10, 10 was that message. God started something great. 11, 11, 11 is when I was in Israel being invited to go back there on 12, 12, 12. 12, 12, 12 is when this happened. Okay? Talk about foolish things. And talk about being obedient to God and see what God will do. What you're about to see. If somebody had told me before we went that, that something like that was going to happen, I wouldn't have believed it. Okay? I would not have. If I wasn't there, I wouldn't believe it, that it actually happened. God had shown me before I went there that he wanted me to do something in Israel. And I said, okay, God, I don't know about that. I argued with God. I argued, I argued. 12, 12, 12, the night before in the hotel room, I had a dream three times, the same dream. I said, oh, God, this is not part of the agenda. They, 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 this, this is not, they just have me there to pray. I was one of 12 people to pray. That's all they want me to pray. They gave me the title. Okay. God, I need confirmation again. He gave me a dream three times, and I still wanted confirmation. <clears throat> okay? I want to make sure it's you, God. I don't want to miss you. See, if you ask God if you ask God a question, it's okay. As long as you don't question. I wasn't questioning God. I was asking a question. God, I want to make sure it's you. Because this is big what you're asking me to do. I was sitting there, and I said, God, give me confirmation. Because I don't even know if there's a Jewish brother in here. He wanted me to do something with the Jewish brother. Three people before me got up and said, he introduced himself. He was a Jewish advocate, born-again Jew for the advocates for Israel. He was like the Jay Sekulow of, of Israel. God said, there is your confirmation. I asked the person who was in charge, God's put something on my heart. Can I do this? If you trust me, he said, yeah, we trust you. Do it. And look what happened. Play that. Healing for the nations. How many of you know that our world is in need of healing? It's in a mess. Government has failed us. Our money, our gold and silver has failed us. Even religion has failed us. But you know, there's one that never fails us. And that's Jesus Christ. Psalms 107, 20, it says, He sent His Word and He healed them. All we need is to hear one word. The right word spoken by the mouth of the Holy Spirit into our ears. Tonight we have heard some wonderful, beautiful prayers. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, that the kingdom of God is not of words, but it's of power and demonstration of the power. I want to ask my brother Caleb to come up here. Would you stand over here? You know, there could be no healing unless first there is reconciliation and before reconciliation there needs to be forgiveness before forgiveness needs to be repentance and somebody needs to start repenting I am the most unlikely person to be standing up here among these wonderful men and women of God. 
But God knows what he's doing. Twelve, twelve, twelve. Special day. An ex-Muslim born in Iran in Jerusalem asking forgiveness I want to stand as a representative of Iranian people, Iranian government, Muslim people in general, Arab people in general. And I want to ask you to forgive me. Would you do that? Now we can have reconciliation. I feel like uh, I feel like now that you've uh, asked for forgiveness, that it would be appropriate for you to uh, pray for me as a representative of the Jewish people. I just want to get down on my knees and ask you to pray a blessing over us as a people. Father, I just thank you for this privilege that I have to be standing next to my brother. Lord, we are brothers, even from thousands of years ago. Isaac and Ishmael reconciled. I pray for my brother, and I thank you, God, for this privilege that I can stand in this holy land next to my brother. And I pray that a special... And it goes on for another five minutes, us going back and forth praying for one another. But I wanted you to see that. That is the foolish things that God used. Tonight, Tonight's altar call is going to be different. The Lord just spoke to me. Tonight's going to be different. Some of you have unforgiveness in your heart. Unforgiveness might be towards your father, towards your mother, towards your brother, your family, towards your brother of a different color, of a different religion, of a different ethnic group. That's why I believe God, it just dawned on me again why God had given a dark-skinned person and a blonde to be married for, by the way, 35 years. <laughs> because he's showing there's no difference in race, color, gender, I believe tonight God wants to heal people. Wants you to reconcile with the Father. With your heavenly Father. I see some of you already weeping. God had hit a nerve here somewhere. So I want to stand. My wife, come up here, Cynthia. If you have... Just stand here at the edge. Don't come all the way up because I want to stand right there. Yeah. And listen, this is the time to be transparent. If some of you, if you have had unforgiveness towards your father, okay, or towards a brother, or vice versa, if somebody hurts you as a father, maybe your own father or as a man, I want you to come up line here, and I want to be standing in proxy for that man. I want to hug you. I want to ask you to forgive me, and I want to love on you. And if you're a woman, and that has happened to you, come up here to my wife. Women on this side. If you're a woman, let my wife love on you and ask you for forgiveness. Tell her she wants to stand in for that woman that hurt you. Let tonight be the night of reconciliation 
Yeah, if you want to play that keyboard, that's wonderful. It's not going to be an official dismissal. We just want to, I just want to hug on you. And as you, as I hug you and I love on you, as you love on me back, release that and receive my love and her love in the place of the one who hurt you. Would you do that tonight? And you'll walk out of here a different person and come tomorrow morning to hear the rest of the story about the Holy Spirit. Come.
There's only one word to describe And only one word comes to mind There's only one word to describe There's only one word to describe, and only one word comes to mind. There's only one word to describe.
worship the Lord in this place. The altars will continue to be open. Once again, if you need to go, Lord bless you and keep you. Remember service, Pastor Said will be back here at 1030 tomorrow morning. Breakfast ministry, don't forget, between 9 and 10. Make sure you get a flyer and give it out for our illustrated sermon next week. Let's get some souls saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Okay. 